Lake Michigan and Lake Huron are actually one giant body of water, separated only by the Straits of Mackinac. Same lake, same ecology, right? Not exactly. When it comes to fish populations and invasive species, Lake Huron in recent years has unexpectedly seen a surge in native species such as lake trout, walleye, smallmouth bass, and emerald shiners. How did this happen? This is a story about how Mother Nature has, once again, trumped the hand of man. For thousands of years, lake trout ruled both lakes Michigan and Huron, feasting on a buffet of smaller fish. But by the 1950s, the lake trout had all but disappeared due to overfishing and the arrival of invasive sea lamprey. Lampreys are aquatic vampires, eel-like creatures that make their living sucking blood out of big fish like lake trout. They slithered their way into the Great Lakes through the man-made canals of the St. Lawrence Seaway. By the 1960s, scientists had developed a poison to control the lampreys, but it was too late. The trout were all but gone, which led to an explosion of Atlantic Ocean alewives which took the same path into the Great Lakes as the lampreys. Scientists needed a new predator fish to control the alewives and turned to the Pacific Ocean for a ferocious fighting fish that would soon become a favorite of Great Lakes anglers, the salmon. Turns out, like the alewives, the salmon could thrive in the fresh water of the lakes, in part because they had so many alewives to eat. Scientists weren't sure these saltwater natives could reproduce in the Great Lakes, so a massive stocking program began. Millions upon millions of these fish have been stocked annually since the mid-1960s. But the notion the salmon would not breed in the Great Lakes turned out to be flat wrong, and this created an overdose of the predators, again threatening the lake's balance. The explosion in salmon was compounded by yet another wave of invaders, the zebra and quagga mussels. They soon smothered the bottom of the lakes, filtering from the water the same plankton alewives depended upon. The result? A crash in the alewife population. Too many salmon were eating them from above, and too many plankton gobbling mussels were out competing them for food down below. Then the salmon crashed in the wake of the alewives' demise. Only small populations of each remain in Lake Huron today. But this time, the lake didn't need any scientific re-engineering to revive it. Instead, Mother Nature did her work, thanks in part to the arrival of yet another invasive species, the round goby. Unlike alewives, gobies can eat the invasive mussels, and native fish can eat the gobies. The arrival of the gobies was good news in another way. It turns out alewives carry an enzyme that block lake trout from being able to naturally reproduce. Gobies don't have the same toxic effect, and this has led to a boom in naturally reproducing lake trout. Today, there may be fewer overall fish in Lake Huron than there was historically, but scientists say the ecosystem has returned to a more natural, self-sustaining state.